Hello, Barienu, Jambo, Sharon, Wabaraka here. And uh, again, I am back on Real Talks. And uh, in these Real Talks, I've actually rebranded them to 10 minutes with Sharon, only because I don't want to take a lot of your time. I just want to take 10 minutes of your time so that we can discuss uh, issues that affect people in real life and uh, address how to move forward but before i do that again like always i'd like to thank everybody who has subscribed to my youtube channel if you go to youtube look for sharon wabaraka official youtube channel i have posted some music videos there i am a singer and i have um, done a few music videos which you're going to find support me as i support you but again in this program it's all about the real talk it's all about um, reality talks of what goes on in real life so that we can support each other now in today's program i want to speak about the reason why we have an increase of mental health illnesses not just among our children because i know i like speaking about children but today i want to focus generally on everybody why there is an increased mental health illnesses that we are seeing in this current climate maybe than we were seeing before and again if i just look from the history when you go to a doctor a doctor will always look at the history they'll always look at the background to have an understanding of what is going on in your life and so even when i am addressing this mental health even though i'm not going to particularly speak about children i want to see where the problem really stems from which could be from childhood and why there is so much increased mental health illnesses nowadays than perhaps we were seeing there before and one of the things i would like to address is as a child if you're a boy let's just speak with the boys who will literally grow into men in the future when they are growing as a boy you are told that boys don't cry as you're being raised up by your parents and this is a culture within mainly the Afri the african culture not so much pre predominantly in the white culture but black african parents will raise their boys telling them boys don't cry boys don't do this and so if you're a boy and you're encountering difficult situations you learn from a very early age to suppress those feelings because the minute you start showing your emotions you're told boys don't cry and so you keep quiet and you hold on to those onto those feelings which can be toxic in the future because you're bottling up a lot of emotions within you and not let, letting them out not letting out those feelings then become a, a wound within your heart within yourself and those can can manifest in, in mental health different types of mental health illnesses in the future as you grow older so what i'm advising parents if you're raising a boy child watch our lead encourage them to cry when they feel sad encourage them to cry ex encourage them to express their emotions let them let out those emotions because if you don't let them express themselves when they are children they're going to have a difficulty when they become older in adults because they have learned to withhold and to suppress their emotions and they don't know any other way of letting those emotions out another mistake um, we make as we are raising our children is particularly when it comes to firstborns we set a very high bar for firstborn children and we tell them that they're supposed to be a good example. And I particularly think that is a wrong approach because children are born with different abilities. You can have a last born who is more capable than the first born that, that you have. And there is nothing wrong with that. But if you set um, a bar ahead for the first born to be like a good example to the rest, and that first born may be has not been blessed in a way that they're able to lead or they're able to reach a certain level of expectation that you have as a parent you're setting them up for failure and what happens is that firstborn will start to feel the rejection they'll start to feel 
being oppressed, they'll start to feel they're not adequate enough and that starts to bring in some bitterness. That bitterness can manifest in forms of mental health illnesses because you have not helped your child, you have not helped your child to, to have an understanding that it's okay to fail. Even if you're the firstborn and the secondborn or the lastborn is doing better than you, it's okay to fail. You know, life has different opportunities. Maybe the opportunities they have isn't the same opportunity you have. So you need to encourage your children, keep trying. Don't um, show them that they have failed just because they're the firstborns and they haven't reached that mark of expectation that you expect them to reach. Show them it is okay. Help them as parents to understand you can do better in another area. If you're not doing well in this particular area, you have potential in doing well in another area. So let's encourage our children and tell them it is okay. Whether they're firstborns, whether they're secondborns, thirdborn, fourthborn, lastborn, accept your children just as they are and know that each one of them is blessed differently. And another thing that um, has increased mental health illnesses in today's generation is the lack of acceptance, particularly coming from parents. And then that is projected into, into our children. So I'll give an example. You're going through a cycle of a toxic relationship. You don't accept that the environment you're living in is toxic and that is going to have impact on your children and you hold on, on to it because you are refusing to have that acceptance and let go. If you're holding on to it, you're raising your children in an environment that is not healthy and those children could pick up some of those toxic things that are happening within that environment and as they grow older, it's going to have a problem for those children. It's going to manifest in mental health um, illnesses. I, I'm calling it mental health because when you go to a doctor and you explain what is happening, then there is a diagnosis that is usually given. And I'm particularly talking about the mental health illnesses, not just about other illnesses. And I'm talking about just the mental health illnesses in today's program. And so you could get a diagnosis uh, obviously, they are going to use the manual, the diagnostic manual that is normally used by all the mental health professionals to diagnose the condition that you could be having. Either you're a child or whether you're going to a doctor as an adult, you will be labeled. There, there's going to be that diagnosis that is going to be given to you following the manual that is which is used or which is followed by the medical professionals to give diagnosis. So some of these problems are problems that start when you are younger as a child, you grow older with those issues within the environment that you're being raised in, and you can carry those conditions into adulthood. And then those issues could affect even your own children. So it becomes like a cycle of repetition of the same sort of problems. You find that the same problems your granddad had, your dad picked up, you have picked up, and your children are also picking up those same cycles of things. And it is therefore important to have an understanding of where these cycles stem from so that you can cut them, be the person that is going to cut that link. You know, when a child is born, there's usually that uh, process of cutting the umbilical cord to detach the child or to separate the child from the mother. You then have to have that understanding that there will come a point where you will break that cycle so that it is not a repetition of the same cycles within the same families. Acceptance is very important. If you're living in a toxic environment, accept that you're living in that toxic environment. Take the necessary precautions, the necessary measures, which is to take action and do what you need to do so that your children are not going to be impacted as they grow older or as they become adults. So it's only um, a few tips that I'm giving today. They, obviously, there is quite a number of other issues, but like I said, it's only 10 minutes with Sharon that um, I'm helping you to have an understanding of where you could end up with mental health illnesses or why your children could end up having a repetition of the same cycle within that family and know how to break those cycles. 
that's it for today guys i'm going to come back with another talk uh i'll carry on doing these topics and again i want to thank everybody that has been supporting me everybody that has been encouraging me everybody that has been logging and following these talks god bless you and i love you very much baraka